Hey everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today we're diving into the world of music production and finding the perfect MacBook for your creative endeavors. And I know it's a big decision, but listen, I got your back. I'm gonna walk you through the MacBook Pro and the MacBook Air and which laptop is the best case scenario for you. Because they're both great laptops and you'll be able to produce music using Logic or Pro Tools on both of those machines. But before we get started, make sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on a future tech talk or a helpful guide when it comes to the world of music production, video production, and overall content creation. Now when it comes to music production, the MacBook lineup offers some fantastic choices. Today we're going to compare the MacBook Air and the MacBook Pro to help you make the right decision for your needs. Let's kick things off with the MacBook Air. Now historically, the MacBook Air was never the go-to for music production, but times have definitely changed. With the introduction of the M1 chip and now the M2 chip in the MacBook Air, these laptops are more than competent, more than capable, if you will, to handle music production, specifically if you're going to be using a program like Logic. Plus, the portability is a major win if you're on the move. It's lightweight, and in the case of the M2 MacBook Air, the screen size is fantastic. You get great real estate, and you're obviously able to hook it up to an external monitor if you want to get a bigger screen size from there. Now, the base model of the MacBook Air comes in at 1099, and that 1099 gets you an 8-core CPU, 8-core GPU with 8 gigabytes of unified memory. Now, I'd argue, too, if you want to get into music production, 8 gigabytes of unified memory is slim. It's uh, barely able to handle everything that you needed to do. So you do need to bump it up, at least in my opinion, to 16 gigs. Bumping up to 16 gigs is going to cost you an additional $200, therefore turning the laptop from $1099 to $1299. That extra $200 gets you 16 gigabytes of memory, and you can stick with 256 gigabytes of internal storage if you'd like, as long as you store everything from your projects to your plugins to even the stock sounds from Logic. Logic itself is about a 60 to 70 to even 80 gig program, maybe even 100, on an external drive. So definitely, instead of paying Apple an additional $200 to go to 512 gigabytes, or paying them an additional $400 to go to one terabyte, instead, I'd spend $89.99 buying a one terabyte solid state drive from Samsung on Amazon. You connect that via USB-C to your laptop and you're good to go. That then becomes your dedicated drive for all things music production and you save some money in the process. Now we're gonna break down the pros and cons of the MacBook Air. On the upside, the MacBook Air is budget friendly and lightweight, making it an excellent entry point. However, it might not be the best choice for heavy duty tasks or long-term use. If you're just starting out though, pairing the MacBook Air with the $200 Logic Pro X is a fantastic way to jumpstart your music production journey without breaking the bank. You can basically get started all in, let's say you get the $1299 laptop with 16 gigabytes of memory, and then you pay $100 for the SSD drive, plus another $200. You're looking at $1,600 before tax to really get started. And that's less than the cost of getting a MacBook Pro. However, if you are a intermediate to a professional producer, and you're looking for the next great MacBook that's gonna last you for a while, and it's gonna do everything you ask of it to do, then a MacBook Pro is the way to go. Before we move on, I do wanna hear from you. If you're currently using a MacBook Air to do some music production, how's it working out for you? Let me know in the comment section down below. And if you're considering switching to the MacBook Air and you have any questions, let me know in the comment section down below. I'll do my best to try to answer those questions for you. Now, for those experienced producers looking to future-proof their setup for the next five to seven years, the MacBook Pro is where it's at. The M3 Pro or M3 Max in either the 14 or 16 inch models can handle just about everything you throw at it. From software instruments to memory intensive applications like Contact, East West Harmony, Auto-Tune, and much more. The MacBook Pro, at least the M3 Pro version of it, starts at $1999 and that gets you 11 core CPU, 14 core GPU, 18 gigabytes of unified memory, and a 512 gigabytes of solid state storage. Now 18 gigabytes obviously meets the minimum threshold of 16 that I highly recommend for music production, and 512 gigabytes of internal storage, at least in my experience with the M2 Mac Mini, has been more than enough. Again, it goes back to buying external storage to kind of store all your plugins and your projects and all that kind of stuff. Obviously have them backed up as well, but that's been the best way that I've been able to manage everything with such minimal internal storage from Apple. Instead of paying the Apple tax and upgrading your internal storage, I'd much rather get external storage and SSD external storage from Amazon, from a company like Samsung, and 
be able to save some money that way. $19.99 is for the 14 inch version. However, if you wanna to go to 16 inches, now you're looking at $24.99 starting price. But that $24.99 gets you 12 core CPU, 18 core GPU, with the same 18 gigabytes of unified memory and 512 gigabytes of solid state storage. For me, when it comes to MacBook Pros, I'm not really a stickler between the 14 inch and the 16 inch. Granted, the 16 inch gives you more real estate, but I really do love the portability and the size of the 14 inch. And back when I had an M1 Max MacBook Pro, I did have the 16 inch and sort of regretted the fact that I didn't get the 14 instead because power wise, they were the same computer. At least you could argue battery wise, the 16 inch lasted longer because it was a larger battery. But for me, uh, I was more than happy to work with a 14 inch if I had that option. I chose to go the route of the 16. It was big, it was bulky, it was heavy, but it did its job. Absolutely loved that laptop before I moved on to the M2 Mac Mini. If you're looking for an M3 Max MacBook Pro, now your starting price is $31.99. That'll get you 14 core CPU, 30 core GPU, 36 gigabytes of unified memory, and starting at a one terabyte solid state drive for internal storage. If you are a professional producer and you are someone that makes music all the time, and you have all sorts of plugins and synth sounds and software instruments and the like, and you want to make sure that your laptop can handle absolutely anything when you go on a recording session or when you have clients come to your recording studio, you don't want it to slow down, you don't want to see that beach ball of death, yeah you're gonna have to make the investment. $3,200 is asking a lot, but it is the route that most people go with, especially if they consider themselves absolute professionals and do this every single day. Well, let's talk about pros and cons. The MacBook Pro is a powerhouse, offering top-notch performance and a stunning display. It's the go-to for professionals. However, it comes with a higher price tag, like I talked about, and a bit more weight. But if you're serious about your craft and need that extra processing power, it's an investment worth considering. Now, a big downside between the MacBook Air and the MacBook Pro is that the MacBook Air only comes equipped with two USB-C slash Thunderbolt 4 ports. There's no HDMI port and there's no SD card slot. The MacBook Pro does come with an HDMI port and an SD card port. So if you don't wanna deal with dongles all day, especially when it comes to hooking up your peripherals that you're gonna be using to record music like the Apollo Twin or the Focusrite, then you're probably gonna to have to consider a MacBook Pro. However, if dongles are not an issue for you and you're totally okay with carrying one, the MacBook Air is a great solution. Speaking of plugins and synth sounds and software instruments, is there one that you use more than the other? For me, it's Contact, and for me, as far as piano sounds go, I love the Grandeur, and I love my string sounds from East West Harmony. Those are my go-tos, and then for my drum sounds, it's always SSD drums. Those are my three go-tos, on top of the two mixing plugins that I always use, Gold Foss for EQ, and Ozone for Mastering from Isotope, of which I made a video talking about those two plugins that I'll put right around here. Do you have any plugins or software instruments that you use all the time for your productions? I'd love to know in the comment section down below. Whether you are just starting out or you're a seasoned pro, there's a MacBook for every music producer. The MacBook Air with its M2 chip is a fantastic budget-friendly option for beginners. While the MacBook Pro with the M3 Pro or M3 Max is the powerhouse that'll keep you going for years to come. Now, if you found this video helpful, do me a favor and hit that thumbs up as it really does help me and gets the video out into the uh, YouTube space of the algorithm, if you will. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button for more tech tips and reviews in regards to music production, video production, and content creation overall. Also, let me know what other topics you'd like me to consider in future videos. Until then, my name is Amir. I'll see you in the next one.